Hello! Welcome back once again to Infinite Jeff, the project where I, Jeff, read the book Infinite Jeff to you, faithful internet listeners. One page at a time, one day at a time. Put it up on the YouTubes.coms. And so on and so forth. It is currently September 29th, 2020. 11.01 a.m. Got up, took a shower, made some coffee, played Mario 64, got several more stars. I currently have 113. There's 120 altogether. I'm trying to get all of them. But the last couple of stars are so much more difficult than, like, I would say that it's going to take me... The amount to get these last seven stars, the amount of time, will probably be equivalent to getting the first 50 or so. Those are all very easy. These are all very difficult, with a lot of bottomless pits, and a lot of tricky platforming, and a bad camera, bad controls. So I did that. Then I ate some breakfast, which was a Jimmy Dean... Meat Lover's Bowl, which is this microwave thing that we got at work, and I'm kind of hooked on them because they're really easy. It's got, like, eggs and potatoes, bacon, sausage, cheese. And then I put them into tortillas, make little burritos. It's pretty tasty. Got my pumpkin spice coffee. You know, we're still... Still at the uh, relative beginning of the pumpkin spice season, so, and you know I, I dig it, digs it quite a bit, but, uh, yeah, and so and I'm recording this, I just recorded in a Jeff Finnegan's Wake, page 209, uh, this is Infinite Jeff, page 223, and then I'm going to edit it, and upload it, and do probably some dishes. Go grab the garbage bins from the road, because I didn't feel like doing it last night, because they have been emptied, and uh, then go to work. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, you can tell I'm excited. Anyway, <clears throat> page 223. Excuse me. Not. She had hurdled her back home. She had hurdled on back home on the final night's and the night's final tea, and gone home and at least finally not turned her face away from the situation, the predicament that she didn't love it anymore, she hated it, and wanted to stop, and also couldn't stop, or imagine stopping, or living without it. She had, in a way, done as they'd made Jim do near the end, and admitted powerlessness over this cage, this unfree show, weeping, literally clutching her heart, smoking first the chore boy scrap she'd used to trap the vapors and form a smokable resin, then the bits of carpet and the acetate panties she'd filtered the solution through hours earlier, weeping and veilless and yarn-haired like some grotesque clown in all four mirrors of her little room's walls. Section break. Chronology of Organization of North American Nations Revenue Enhancing Subsidized Time Trademark by year. So that, the O-N-A-N, which, again, Onan, you know, big masturbation reference, haha. Ha. But it's also, I guess, the Organization of North American Nations. And so I keep referring to the year of the depend on adult undergarment. Apparently this is uh, where this comes from. So number one, year of the Whopper. I take it this was a commentary on the um, nature of branding and marketing in this country. And how, I mean, it's... It, it, <laughs> It's not an uh, uh, an unfair extrapolation to think that the years would be have corporate sponsorship in the future. Could still be headed that way. We'll see. Anyway, one, year of the Whopper. Two, year of the Tux medicated pad. Not even sure they make those anymore. Three, year of the trial size Dove Bar. Four, year of the Purdue Wonder Chicken. Five, year of the Whisper Quiet Maytag Dishmaster. Six, year of the Yushi... You shit you. <laughs> it's supposed to be Japanese, but it says you shit you. <clears throat> you shit you. 2007. Mimetic resolution. Cartridge view. Motherboard. Easy to install. Upgrade. Four. Infernotron slash interlace TP systems for home, office, or mobile. 
and then there's an SIC, something's misspelled, whatever it might be. Seven, year of dairy products from the American Heartland. Eight, year of the Depend Adult Undergarment. Nine, year of Glad. I'm guessing like the garbage bags. Uh, footnote 78, so we will find out at some point in the far future when we will have no idea what it's referring to. So that's fun. It's very postmodern of us. This is a postmodern way that I'm reading this book. Another section break. Here we go. Jim's eldest, Orin. Punter extraordinaire. Dodger of flung acid extraordinaire. Had once shown Joel Van Dyne his childhood collection of husks of the lemon pledge that the school's players used to keep the sun off. Different sized legs and portions of legs, well-muscled arms, a battery of five-hold masks hung on nails from an uproar, upright fiberboard sheet. Not all the husks had names below them. Ew. Boystelin Street, East, means she passes again the black bronze equestrian statue of Boston's Colonel Shaw and the Massachusetts 54th, illuminated now by a patch of emergent sunlight. Shaw's metal head and raised sword illicitly drappled, draped, I guess, in a large Quebecois fleur-de-lis flag with all four irises' stems altered to red blades. So it's absurdly now a red, white, and blue flag. Three Boston cops on ladders with poles and shears. The Canadian militants come in the night on the eve of interdependence, thinking anyone cares whether they... All right, that was page number 200. 23 of this book, Infinite Chest, on the project that I'm doing called Infinite Jeff. Good night.